This right here, this is the bee's knees of pizza. This is the Beatles of pizza, my friend. Every the other, Beatles. Every other pizza tastes like my grandma's teeth. Wait, hold on. How do you even know that? My grandma's teeth were. Uh, oh. Just, her false teeth were just sitting okay. there soaking in the jar. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Now I'm gonna lose my appetite. You asked. I don't even know why I asked. I regret it. Uh, so, I saw Jared Holmes uh, just a little while ago before I saw you. Oh, Jared? Yeah. I always liked him. Yeah, me too. He was a really nice guy in school. And not just a nice guy, a kind guy. And he's still a nice, kind guy. Yes, that's true. There's a difference. That's very insightful. Are you going to the reunion today? I don't know. You going? Nah, I can't. I gotta work late at the hospital today. It's a valid excuse, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's just gonna be a bunch of people that we haven't seen in a long time reconnecting and partying like it's 2012 all over again. Yeah, that actually sounds kind of boring. Besides, I did my time anyway. Couldn't have said it better myself, man. <laughs> um, let's chat sometime, yeah? Yeah, totally. Uh, Doc? <laughs> can I call you Dr. Holmes now? You can, and you will be the first. All right, later, Jerry. <laughs> later, man. You won prom king, so you're here. Yeah, 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 that's right. I remember yeah. I remember just being so glad that he got it instead of that jerk-ass Martin James. Oh, my gosh. Martin, he's such a freaking douche. He Tell still is. It. Yeah. I don't know how they don't know it, though. Oh, wait, maybe <laughs> they do know it. They just don't care. Right. Yeah. They treat him like he's some Greek god or something. Like, yeah. Martin, Martin, like, shut up. Yeah, seriously. Gosh. He was a jerk. It's not like any of us knew it back then. Yeah. Yeah, but I definitely remember. When Jared won Prom King, I was thinking, yeah, this is right. He was, he was a good guy. He was the guy for the job. Yeah. You know, there were some other good memories at prom. I don't like what? All the seniors pairing up and walking down the aisle? I was all alone. Uh, no. I was talking about us dancing together. You remember that? Of course I do! Do you remember what song it was that we danced to? Do you? No. <laughs> I do. What is it? Back at one, Brian McKnight. See, those are good memories. And speaking of pairing up, you're freaking engaged now. Yeah, but you know, Katie and I, we're just, we're taking it slow. We're not like rushing it or anything. Yeah, and that's actually a good thing because way too many people rush it these days. Like, they think they love each other, but they don't. It's infatuation and they have kids and they get divorced and then the kids are all confused and angry and sad. Yeah, and those people are like just out of high school and then you have those type of people uh, who are together in high school and they do learn and grow from the relationship long past high school. But like Jared, I mean, he's a, he's yeah. a, he's a husband, he's a father, he's a great family man and he's actually doing pretty well. He's a really good guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Hey, um... Did you know, back then? That I was gay? Yeah. It was, uh... It was complicated because, you know, my parents are really conservative and... Mm -hmm. I I know what it's like. You have to. I, I remember that one kid, Andrew Clemens. Never wanted to talk to him. Never wanted to approach him. Never wanted to acknowledge him because he was gay. They hate that about me. Yeah, but you know, we all grow and learn. That was back then. Yeah. That's the purpose, right? When you get out of here and experience life you're supposed to grow and learn but the only problem is when people don't grow and learn yeah exactly they stay the same mm -hmm. I hear you. and i know you're not still a homophobe no way yeah no way <laughs> no i went to college i met more people developed a brain yeah it's just that you grew and you learned You know, if, if I had known about you back then, I I would have accepted it. I mean, we were pretty much friends, weren't we? Yeah, we were. I mean, we did the I mean, we did the plays together, and you did dance with me. And... Yeah, 
the plays fell down. <laughs> yep. Did a lot of those. Like, yeah, I fell down. Stunts. A that lot. was so funny. Physical comedy, slapstick, yeah, crap slapstick. balls. Slapstick, yes. It's a nice day anyway. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. I used to come out here all the time with Homer well, and Mackenzie, you know. Yeah, well, you never hung out here with me. It's true. So let's go. Ladies first. Mmm, age before beauty. You're older than me. Okay, whatever, right. Youngest age before beauty. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Is that poison ivy? No. How can you tell? I was in Weeblos. What? Long Cub time Scouts? Ago. No, no, it's like a higher ranking of the Scouts. You know, there's Cub Scouts and Weeblos. You know, it's like we believe in the law of the pack. We believe Weeblos. Mm. You know, it's funny, they taught us to identify poison ivy. They took us camping overnight. They even let us play with pocket knives. They never let us start a fire. I ever get stuck on a desert island somewhere, I'm screwed. That's definitely poison ivy. Really? Yep, stay back. Okay. In the fourth grade. Really? Like, it was literally all over me. All over you? It was terrible. I couldn't even look at it. It was bad. <laughs> How about you? Oh, if you believe me, you're gonna hate me. Try me. I'm immune to it. No, you're not. Are you yeah, really? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, so I was out here. I was fighting hide and seek with my cousins. I hid underneath some brush. There was poison ivy all over it, and it was all over me, and I didn't even realize it until I took a good look, and nothing happened. Like, what? Nothing. I hate you. <laughs> Sorry. You're a lucky son of a gun. Ugh. Gosh. Maybe the poison's objective. Maybe. Where we had keggers. Bear? Yeah. Have you seriously never been to any of them? Never. Do you like them? They're okay. I mean, we kind of just stood around and stared at each other, like drinking cheap beer out of plastic cups. <laughs> that was about it. Of course. Well, she belongs somewhere. Oh. Oh, you belong. Yeah, no, uh, uh, not really with them. More like the uh, clean-cut, you know, goody-good crowd, like like Mackenzie, Aaron, Natalie, and Homer. Well, you know, there was well, that. Though. No, like he was better because of you guys. I wouldn't say that's entirely fair. Why not? Well, because whenever he and I were together, I was as big a pain in the ass as he was. He was always getting in trouble, and I was guilty by association. I wasn't even aware of it until this one time, uh, you know, back in the 11th grade when we were rehearsing that play. Mm -hmm. These two girls were like racing the prop wagon, like down the hall, back and forth. Oh gosh. And, <laughs> yeah, you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> and then Mrs. Smith, she came up and, and she noticed them, and she, and she said, Oh, I thought it was Joe and Homer. Oh, wow. It was funny. <laughs> but eye-opening at the same time. I know, but like, with you, Mackenzie, and Natalie, and everyone else in the group, he literally had a better attitude, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I know, it was a long time ago. And we're here, you're here, we've made it, and honestly, even if we don't realize it, we're here to remind ourselves of, you know, where we were.
now you're going to remember this place for another reason. I'm going to tell you something that only a few people know about. Can I trust you? Yeah, of course you can. I mean, I like you. And I... I don't know if we're going to, you know, after today, if we're going to keep talking like this, if we're going to text, Skype, visit each other every now and again. But, like, I'm about to tell you a, a big secret, okay? And the only people who know about it are people that I care about. People who deserve to know. And I do care about you. Aww. Joe, I've always cared about you, too. I mean, you were always sweet to me. Well, it's because you were sweet to me. I promise that to tell? I promise. Okay. Carla? I'm not straight. I'm Pan. You are? Yeah. So when did you know? A little over a year ago. I was analyzing my relationship with, with Katie and my feelings about her, feelings in the past. I just couldn't deny who I was anymore. So I told her. She was okay with it because, you know, now she knows that that I love her for her, just like she loves me for me. Of course she does, and that's good. Yeah. Her parents don't know yet. I mean, they're kind of conservative like that. Mm. I don't even think they like me so much as they tolerate me because they love Katie. So... Yeah, well... I haven't really come out to them. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it's honestly not everybody's business. Everybody doesn't have to know about it if you don't want to. Well, I mean, that's that's why I'm only telling people who I think deserve to know, like, like my parents know. The reason I haven't come out publicly is because... Well, I'm sure you know as well as I do. People in small towns, they can get confused, scared can behave irrationally, if it's not normal or straight, or normal and straight, you know, they, they see it as an abomination, they see it as a punchline, they see it as something that, that needs saving, and it's really not fair, because like, if, if I came out, they would go after my parents. I, sometimes I don't even know how I'm supposed to feel, I just know... Glad you told me, Joe. I really am. Thanks for listening. Of course. I'm here. Um. Did I just bomb this banter thing? Did I just kill the whole day for us? What? I. No, what are you talking about? No, you literally just confided in me and I listened. And that, that means a whole lot. Seriously. It's okay. Let's go. Um, can I ask you something, though? Yeah, sure. If you weren't gay, you think we would have been a couple? <sighs> no. No way. Um, Not a chance. You really want to know? <laughs> hey. Hmm? You let me down easy, right? Absolutely. Definitely. Are you, you would? Really? Yeah. Be a friend? Pal. Buddy old pal. Friend to the end. Son of a gun. <laughs> See? You get it? Alright, alright. No hard feelings. No. No. I couldn't handle that anyway. Oh, I'm sure you couldn't. You know me. Come on. <laughs>
So, uh, uh Mackenzie cut me off. What? Not too long ago. I mean, we weren't really friends anymore, but... Actually, I don't even think we were friends back in senior year. In fact, I know we weren't friends anymore back in senior year. I feel like senior year, I just kept trying to hold on to what we had. I didn't really know what was going on, but she definitely... She didn't change. I mean, why? Well, well, no, she did change. I just didn't notice. You know? Yeah. I mean, I get that people break away, but... I mean, that was school, so it was kind of confusing. You know? Yeah, I know. That's... that's tough. Yeah. I was so stupid. I feel like I wasted... I, no, I... The prom. I went to prom so I could try to gain her affections back. She didn't even show up. There's something I didn't tell you. Okay, so I knew last year that I was pan, but I didn't know until I was not even 18 that I wasn't straight. What do you mean? I mean, I was in love with Homer. When the incident happened between him and What's-Her-Face, the junior, in the library, and he went to jail, I just felt so messed up inside, like, I thought I was sad because I was losing my best friend, but then I realized I was sad because I was actually in love with him. And I didn't, I didn't know how to feel about that. It just sort of like shocked me because like, I didn't want to be, I feel like if he knew what I was feeling at the time, when I wrote him, when we hung out again, he'd probably cut me off too. He hated gay people. Wow, and you knew even then. Yeah, and it was it was just so confusing back then because like I I didn't know I didn't know what to do, I didn't know who to talk to about it. I just kept it all to myself. I couldn't tell or at least I thought I couldn't tell. My my mom, my dad, my, my therapist, my pastor. So then, you know, he got out, he was free. And we were we were hanging out again. Just like the good old days. That's how it was supposed to be anyway. It just wasn't the same anymore. And then he took off. Try to get things back to normal. That was impossible. And ever since then, I've looked back at LGBTQ people differently. Wow. I never told anybody that before. The strange thing is about memory. What's that? I remember walking down this trail with Mackenzie and Homer. And I remember going to the park, playing at the creek. I don't remember what we did. I just remember how it felt being there. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I honestly know what you mean because I feel the same way about the parties at here like I all I remember is being with friends and looking at fish in the creek I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Yes. Oh, no. No. Oh. No. No. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. So, tell me about you. <laughs> I think I already did. No, like, what do you do? What do you like to do? I already told you about me. Well, I mean, I do, uh, I do Joe jobs. You know, retail. Custodial, whatever helps pay the bills around here. What about music? You don't do that anymore? Sometimes, yeah, but it's, it's not my main thing anymore. So what's your main thing? My main thing? <laughs> Being the best person I can be for someone who deserves my love. <laughs> I don't know. Can you tell me one of your poems? Uh, yeah, I just have to think of one. 
How many do you have? Hmm. Enough to make a book, apparently. Yep. You probably didn't know, but I've actually got a publisher for my collection of works. Really? Wow. Yeah, it's like written about my life for the past decade or so. That's awesome. Thanks. I'm kind of bearing my soul into it a little bit. Oh, so if I, if I read this book, then I guess I understand you better. Yeah, I mean, hopefully as much as you can understand poetry. Right. I imagine there's a lot of subtleties yeah. here and there. Yeah, you just have to read between the lines. Well, let me hear one. Come on. I gotta think of one. Okay. I told you. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. Jeez. Hey. Uh, I have to. I have to go to the bathroom. All right. Carla. Oh. Alexandra. Hi. Hi. So what are you doing here? The kids are at the park. Martin's playing with them, so I thought I'd take a walk. Oh, right. You're a uh, mom now. Yep. Hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> Very. So are you going to the reunion today? I thought about it, but probably not. Why not? What am I going to... Reminisce, see old friends, show the new you, show it off. Show it off. <laughs> Good one, Carla. <laughs> I just think if you went to the event today, it would be good for you. Thanks, but I'm, I'm fine. Are you fine though? Really? Because you deserve to be happy. But I am happy. I live in Chicago now. I have an amazing girlfriend and I have a book that's about to be published. Oh, and did you bring your girlfriend? Why did you say that word like that? Like you're allergic to it or something? I didn't mean anything by it. I was just curious. Yeah, well, she's not here. She's working and plus she doesn't feel like being around a whole bunch of people she doesn't know. So. That's understandable. So, why do you want me to go today? Well, I... I wanted to reach out to you for years. But you didn't. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like such a coward. I've wanted to apologize many times over. And I just... It's really hard for me and... I just, I wanted us both to be able to move on and I catch up with you on social media and I am very, like, honored. I'm very, and I love what you've been able to do with your life and the day your book comes out, I'm going to get it at Barnes and Noble. Or you won't Noble. like it. Yeah. What? Just, just a fair warning. You won't like what you see or read in the book. Why? I don't say any names, but uh, you'll get the gist. I don't understand. You know, I haven't moved on with my life, Alexandra. What you did to me, what I've been through, I turned it into art. Carefully chosen words about my life in high school up till now. That is what is being published in my book. Published. I'm so sorry. I was young. I was confused. I was scared. And so I behaved irrationally. I told everyone what was afraid, what I was afraid was happening between us. But you outed me. You outed me, and that was my decision to make. And you took that away from me. All you had to say was, I don't like you like that. And I would have been okay. But instead you, you treated me like I was some sort of freak. I know that now, I just, 
I just won't be able to forgive myself what I did to you. What you did to me. You know, that actually makes sense because for the longest time, I thought you were the victim and I was just some lesbian psycho. And I hated myself. I hated myself for most of college because I was scared to be who I was. I was afraid. And it was because of you, Alexandra. I was young too. I was scared. I was nervous. I didn't know what to do. I know that now, and I can't apologize enough for it. And I, there's no way I can understand what you might have gone through because of that. When I understood the weight of what I had finally done to you, I had a hard time forgiving myself. And I would love to just keep this in the past and move on, but there are people in this town that will not let me forget. And I think I hide behind my husband and my children. And I hate myself for it. I use them as a defense weapon. I have to live with that every day. And I didn't intend to hurt you. I didn't want to hurt you. But you did. You hurt me. And now you're here, sitting here, trying to fix everything. But you know what? I, I looked you up on social media, too. You have a perfect peachy cane life now. You have perfect husband, perfect life, perfect kids, perfect house. <laughs> Hashtag living the dream. You're pathetic. You're making this all about you. And you don't care. And that is why I'm not going to the reunion. And you shouldn't either. There's got to be something else that you remember about coming to these parties, aside from just how it felt. I mean, if I can remember us dancing at prom in a time when I felt like I could, well, you know, just, there's got to be something. Yeah, um, it was with this girl in 11th grade. We were here. And it's so crazy because even though we've been going to school together for years, like, we knew of each other, but... It wasn't until this moment that we actually got to know each other. And we're just standing around, talking, laughing. Both had drinks that we hated. And she said it smelled like, and tasted like cat piss. <laughs> and it was like, that moment helped. You know, like, we'd see each other and the hallways and gym class and even though we didn't talk we would just stare at each other and smile because we both knew and shared this moment and it was great because it was like we had this secret between us that no one else knew like we were exclusive to it and I loved it the love that we shared that secret wow who was it uh, I'm sorry was that insensitive no, it's okay. Uh, it was Alexandra. Oh. Okay, so just so I got this right, in junior year, you and Alex shared something special. In senior year, she outs you as gay, right? Well, look at you now. You got a you got a great girlfriend. You got a great job, great life. You got a great way of expressing yourself. Hold her off like a boss. You express yourself very clearly to Alex. And I'm very proud of you for that. I think this is something to celebrate. You wanna get a burger or something? My treat? Didn't we get pizza like a couple hours ago? Well, by the time we get out of here, it'll probably be supper time. 
my treat. Okay, fine. Now you're speaking my language. <laughs> I won't deny that. Even though I did pay for the pizza and you stole half of it. Oh, come No, you told me that I could have it. You know how much I love my pizza. Yeah, that's fine. It's a nice place. Yeah. Yeah. It's raining. Yeah. It is. I think we should go. No, seriously, how much of the play do you really remember? <laughs> well, I remember, uh... I remember tripping and falling all the time on stage just to make people laugh. It was black and blue for days. Fraser! <laughs> yeah, I remember that too. You kept yelling my character's name. Fraser! And <laughs> you're basically the stick in the mud to my community antics. Do you know I tried so hard to keep a straight face? You could have fooled me. I guess you must have been a really great actress. Uh, excuse me. I had to keep pinching myself to keep myself from laughing. Really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Okay, so do you remember uh, when we did that one play and we were detectives, we were investigating a murder? Oh, yeah, I know where you're going with this. It's where you ad lib that pratfall off stage and the audience was just thinking it was another one of Fraser's antics. God, Miss Lawrence was so pissed about that. But no, no, that's that's not it. No, okay, I do know. It's where we bust in to get the real killer and then you really trip at the entrance. You knew that was real? You knew that I didn't do it on purpose? Oh, well, yeah, duh. You're, you know, you're not that great of a comedian. Oh, so. thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, so was that it? No, it was the part where we apprehended the suspect. It was that big guy, and he freaking flipped me over and ran off. He escaped, and then I grabbed my gun, I got up, and I yelled, Get back here! And then I <laughs> chased after him, and I, I, my voice cracked when I screamed. It was improvised. I said, Get back here! <laughs> and then the audience just erupted with laughter. It was unbelievable. I loved it. Oh my god. Oh, I, I remember that! Weren't you like 17? Did you even go through puberty yet? <laughs> It never sounds natural when I scream or yell. It sounds like a high-pitched verbal, you know, a verbal pit bull or like Tom Hardy and as Venom getting his nuts squashed. What? Today? Oh, it's worse today. Prove it. <laughs> Prove it. Yeah. What, here in the car right now? Yes. Oh, oh, it's just us. No one's going to hear you anyway. Who cares? No one's going to hear it. I care! Oh. Okay. Yeah. That <laughs> That was awful. It's even worse today. You're right. Just don't ask me to play the penis game anytime soon. Oh boy. Penis. 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 <clears throat> penis! Okay, okay, you win. <laughs> Damn right. Yeah. Oh, don't ask me to do that again. What are you talking about? That was only the first round. Round one? Yes. What's the prize? The penis? I think I already got it covered in that department. Yeah. <laughs> you say so. <laughs> <sighs> hey, do you want to go to the water? Like the lake? Yeah, I like it there. Yeah, sure. Let's go. You know, my dad and I used to do this thing where we would count ducks. Why, was he starting a duck census or something? No. 
It was just to pass the time. It's beautiful. Over there, you see. One, two, three, four, six ducks. Oh. Look at that. Oh. So cute. You know, this one time at Waffle House, I got stopped by a duck crossing. No way, really? No way, yeah. They don't care about, about people or cars. What? We're the ones in their way, they don't care. They don't have to. No, they don't. Hey, you got the time. Oh, yeah. Ah, it's a quarter past six. Party's over. And aren't you so sad that we missed it? No, what are you talking about? We are the party. <laughs> You're right. Fair enough. So hey, uh, you still owe me a, a poem. Maybe like a little teaser for the book before I buy it. What do you say? Okay. Good. To whom it may concern, I'm a senior in high school. To whom it may concern, everyone's the same in a small town in Kansas. To whom it may concern, my parents understand. To whom it may concern, many don't care to. To whom it may concern, I'm not the same anymore. To whom it may concern, I didn't ask for this. To whom it may concern, many tell me that I'm going to Hades. And to whom it may concern, I'd rather be there than here. To whom it may concern. It's not my best, uh, but you asked for a sneak no, preview. No, 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 it's so. great, it's great, it's very detailed, I love it. It's, it really says something. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Thanks. Don't let people like Alex get to you. And I'm not gonna let people like Martin get to me either. I'll come out when the time is right, and I know I have your support. Duh, of course you have my support. I'm here. You got this, Joe. I'm sure my parents know by now that I skipped the reunion. <laughs> you think they'll take it well? Maybe, if, maybe after I tell them, a few other people skipped it too. You think they did? I'm sure. I mean, Jared did. You did. <laughs> You got a point there, buddy. <laughs> hey. 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 Focus on the road. <laughs> I'm all past. Thank you. For what? For remembering the difference between now and then and for reminding me of who I am. At least now you know you're not alone. Feels really good. I bet. So, um, what happens after today with us? What are you doing tomorrow? Spending time with my parents mostly. When do you leave? Monday. Do you think before then you could have some time to squeeze little old me? I don't know. My parents' house? Okay. And after that? Then after that, we'll continue to be friends and we'll text each other often. Oh, and I'm definitely harassing you. <laughs> I like that.
Hey, Joe. You have something to say to my face? I don't know, Martin, do I? Well, I don't know. If you can talk behind my back, maybe you should say it to me. Why are you upset about a reunion, then? Just because you had a bad time at this reunion. I mean, come on. I had a bad time because people were talking shit about me. I wasn't talking shit about you, okay? I was just... Look, you weren't there. All right, it, it sounds a lot better with context. That's all. I don't know, dude. I mean... Martin, what's the real problem here? Seriously. Because I know this isn't just about some things that are set behind your back. That's Man, all. people bringing things up from the past... Man, there's so much. So much that nobody knows about. And so anytime anything gets brought back up, it's painful for me. All right, I've had to sit here for 10 years in this town with so many of the same people. And yet nobody has truly cared for me. They put these expectations on me. They put these responsibilities on me. All right, it's who does Martin have to be? I've never gotten to be myself. I'm not going to explore like you. I've just had to take care of this town. Why do you feel like you have that responsibility, though? Like, why don't you just go, leave, get out? Why do you have to be stuck here with, like, all the small-town people who, like, say all these things about equality? I'm assuming that what you said on Facebook back in 2015 about the equality thing when you said you were disgusted, right? I'm pretty sure that wasn't you. Part of me wants to think it was you, but... Come on, tell me the truth. And I don't know. I, you don't know. I'm scared because if I go, if I leave this town, who am I? That's what you gotta find out, man. I mean, that's, that's what I did. But it's been 10 years. I know it's been 10 years. I mean, I'm... It hasn't been 20 years, right? You have another 10 years to figure that out for the next reunion. Okay? So, don't worry about it so much. It's a 10-year reunion. A lot of memories get brought up. I think you and Alex need to just walk around this place, go through the woods, go to the lake, just really talk. Because, you know, nature... It's got this way of really bringing things out. You know, she's the only one who knows me. I really knows me. And, um... I get it. Yeah. I get it. Look, um... What I did say about you, I just want you to know that it's got nothing to do with who you are, all right? So it's just, why don't we actually just talk about, let's talk about what you've been up to these past 10 years, how about that?